Welcome to the Northwest Adventure. In today's episode is This is the Gear I Wear. Alright, let's set up this Quantum Valiant hole. Not sure if y'all know, but I'm going surf fishing. And then we'll get it into the water. And before I enter the surf, I'll show y'all the gear that I wear. Right, we're going with a shrimp. <laughs> Try one of these too. What the heck? I like using different baits on the same line and seeing which one they like. And if they keep hitting the same one, then I make them all the same one. So this is what I'm using. And you could use something like this too, or you could use your own kind of baits. Like some herring. You could use anchovy, sardines. You name it. You can even use clams. And I'm going to be using squid in a while if these aren't productive. So let's set this to the side and get my crab snare ready. Alright, so earlier in the video called part one, I didn't tell you what type of line I was using on this rail. And what I'm using is 40 pound super braid so this is the good stuff it's green and it blends in nice with this Pacific Ocean so I'll be using this and then I'm gonna be using a leader which will be 25 pound monofilament line and what I found is that when I make the connection of those two together the mono turns into like a shock absorber for the heavy crab snare. So I'm able to throw it out into the ocean and not lose it. Now I've tied many knots and tied crab snares straight to the super braid and on the first cast it was gone. It was out of there. So now I'm using the line the mono line that is so this line here is the good stuff a little bit greener than the other line but that's okay and right now you can see the ocean behind me but once I get my stuff into the water this truck is going to move be moved far far away it's an incoming tide so I don't want to be caught with my pants down as the saying goes, and being the stupid guy who needs to get dug up out of the sand. But I'll tell you one thing, this vehicle here kicks butt in the sand. So usually I'm the guy helping people out, but I don't want it to change and be different today. So anyways, let me see if I can get this, because I'm shucking and driving. So we're going to do the clinch knot improvised on this. I'll leave a link to the video on the screen. The rabbit goes into the hole. And then into the next hole. And then it's the quick lick. What do y'all know about the quick lick? Tug it. It'll look like that. Take your fingers. Make it nice and tight. Come on now. Damn. All right. All right. So I'm going to be using one of these traps today. And these are called Custabo de Crabe. Anyways, you can find this on Amazon. It's a Danielson. I've never used a Danielson before. And I've only used this one once or twice. I was actually 
crabbing with a crab ring in uh, Toklin and scrape this out of the bay. So, got it for free. Give it five twists. Why five? Yeah, I don't know. Just a good number. Right in the top. If I ain't number one, I want to be in the top five of people who enjoy life. <laughs> no. So here's how this one works. So, you fill it with bait. You put a piece of chicken or a fish or something on here. You wire it tight. And then you cast it out from your fishing pole. Wait a few minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, but not too long. And then reel it in. And once you start reeling it, reeling it, now you're gonna have a Dungeness Crab Sandwich. I'm gonna go grab some bait real quick. And the bait of choice today will be frozen chicken breast. All right, so I have a portion of a chicken thigh. So we'll use this, the chicken thigh. Damn, that's frozen. There we go. Yep, right through the bone. Ah! Alright, and why am I putting a hole in it? So I can see you. <laughs> Just kidding. Chicken and the hole. There you go. And you know what? These crabos get hungry. I'm going to grab one more piece. Come on, baby. All right, there we go. All right. In the absence of orders, attack. And that's what I did. So this bad boy's ready to go into the ocean. All right. Time to suit up so I can show you all the gear that I wear. Great, I scored these funky shoes the other day from Amazon. Woohoo! Pretty colorful, yo. So basically, I'll wear these with my waders. So, super light, waterproof, and uh, well, water drains through them. So they're made for the water. Don't know if they're waterproof, but yeah, they got holes in them, so yeah. But uh, looks like great drainage system. I'll let you know how they work out later. They're quite bright, but that's all right. I'm the type of guy who wants to be seen when I'm out here on the water. So this is what I like to wear for surf fishing. So these are Caddis Wading Systems waders they're neoprene they got booties built-in booties they keep you super warm and when I'm out here on the sand I don't really need to use shoes I could walk in it like this but why you know at the end of the day I don't want to end up tearing these so I do use funky shoes but the ocean will destroy almost anything you have so remember that so yeah when you wear these you want to put a belt on around your waist so if you do get sucked up into the surf, this belt will be wrapping around your waist. And when the water tries to get in here, it'll have a harder time. And that way you won't fill these up with salt water. So that is one of the greatest things you do not want to do is fill these up with water. So when you're out here, honestly, pay attention and uh, just take your time and don't get out there too deep. You don't need to watch me get undressed but I'm putting on the gear now. And I wear long johns when I come out here because it's windy and it's chilly. Little 
little blustery, eh? Hip hop, the art of staying fresh. I've got a Brundin's jacket, high vis with some black on it. The high vis will make you visible. And make sure when you put on these waders. You go to the bathroom before you do. Actually, will take you a while <laughs> if you have to go really bad. Especially for men, once you jump in the water, it's like, whoa! At least for this man. And in these Cadis waders, they have a little hand thing. But don't think about storing your gear in here, because I've done that before and I lost something very valuable to me, because I didn't even realize there was a hole. I won't even talk about what was in there, but pay attention and watch the hole. It does tricks. Shout out to the staff at Nelson Crab. And do not forget your polarized sunglasses. You'll thank me later. <laughs> City Rockers are in the house. But I didn't put the belt on, so let's do that real quick. Speaking of belt, shout out to Charles Oliveira for taking out Iron Mike Chandler for the lightweight division. All right, let me set up some gear on the beach. Right, so this here is a clam bag. You can use it for fish too. So hopefully when I catch some fish, I'll be able to throw them in here and not have to walk back to the truck. And as you know, my gear is only right here and the beach is right there. But I am going to park very far away just in case some sneaker waves come in. So yeah, I'm gonna put some distance between my vehicle and the surf. Always do that, folks. Now y'all know about the gear that I wear. So make sure you get out and get some quality gear that keeps you warm, dry, and out there in the elements, fishing. Signing out for now, it's the Northwest Adventure. Stay fresh. Beats by AC, the program director of hiphopphilosophy.com radio.